Hey guys, Solid here. Welcome back to another episode of Adventure News. This month we've got some good topics to get through. We've got BMW updating their baby GS. We also have Aprilia entering the small adventure bike market. MV Augusta are resurrecting the elephant name from the Dakar days in the mid 90s. And finally, Harley Davidson, they're in a spot of trouble and they've delayed the release of the Pan America until 2021. So let's get into the video. BMW have been caught test riding their new baby GS. It's got some fresh updates, although it doesn't look too extreme in the updates. What we can see is that the look of the bike has changed. It looks slightly more aggressive than the old model. We can also see an LED headlight. That's a nice little update to have. There's also rumors that the engine is going to be updated as well, or at least the exhaust system to try and pass India's BS6 emission standards, which is kind of like their own Euro five so it looks like the baby GS at least purportedly is going to be updated to pass those standards whether it will lose horsepower in trying to pass those emissions or whether BMW will make the engine make more power to offset the emission standards is still remains to be seen hopefully it doesn't lose any power as it is only a little 300 cc bike so it needs all the help it can get in the horsepower department however what i would have really loved to have seen with this baby gs is a model being tested that was a little more dirt orientated i really like how bmw operate with their bigger bikes they have the road going model usually the f700 or the f750 gs as it is and then you got the 800 and the gsa which are much more dirt orientated and the same for the big 1250 as well you've got the cast wheel version and the spoke wheel version so i'm still scratching my head a little bit as to why bmw haven't offered the same options for the little baby gs we've only got the cast wheel version and i really think the little gs would do well as a little adventure bike with some spoke wheels some taller suspension and a little more dirt orientated features Think of a Honda 250 Rally, but with a 310 GS motor, I really think they would be on a winner. Now, I understand that the G310 as it stands is much more appealing to a general audience across the globe, but I think they could offer this more dirt orientated baby GS with a higher premium and it would do quite well, at least here in the Western markets that is. So I'm still scratching my head why BMW haven't done that. If you'd like to see a more dirt orientated GS, let me know in the comment section down below. Or if you think I'm mad, let me know as well. A single measly image of a brand new adventure bike from Aprilia has surfaced. They're making a bigger version of their current 150 Terra and they're making it into a 250cc. Now the engine already exists in the GPR from Aprilia and it's quite a respectable little engine it makes 26 horsepower and 22 newton meters of torque so those are pretty good figures for a 250 what they're also mentioning is that they're thinking of making a more dirt orientated option compared to what we can see in the image they're going to make a higher travel suspension model with a 21 inch front wheel so that's good news as well the bad news is it's asia only at the moment and it is being built in china rather than in italy so that might make a few of you hesitate a little as well as i know uh, china's manufacturing can be quite hit or miss so it remains to be seen whether this will be a quality product the other thing I would like to point out is if they did consider bringing this to the Western markets, say America, Canada, England, Australia, where we have much higher speeds, I really think this bike could do with being bought out to at least 300 cc's to make sense. And if they did, that could be a really great lightweight adventure bike in my opinion. But let me know what you think. Would you be happy with 250 cc's? Would you buy it? considering it's being made in China? And would you rather have bought out to 300 cc's or do you just not care about small adventure bikes at all? Let me know in the comment section down below. MV Augusta have resurrected the elephant name. They've recently reapplied for the rights to the elephant name. Now, if you're not familiar with the elephant motorcycle, it was a Dakar winning motorcycle in the 90s made by Kajiva and Ducati. It won the 1990 and the 94 Dakar rally from memory and it's got some pretty good dirt heritage. Now MV Augusta in the mid 2000s then bought the rights to the name and they subsequently did absolutely nothing with it. 
Now they've reapplied for the name and they're saying they're gonna resurrect it and put it on the new adventure bike that they're currently designing. So the question with this MV Augusta though is which way are they gonna go? Will they make a very true to form Dakar capable off-road adventure bike or will they go the more soft rotor version like we've seen so many big adventure bikes do where they're overweight they're very comfortable and they're very capable tourers but they're not too crash hot off-road I would like to see the more dirt orientated version rather than the soft rotor. We already have plenty of those. I don't think we have enough really dirt capable adventure bikes. I'd like to see something like the T700, but from MV Augusta, that's what really gets me going because you can still go and get your delicious latte on a very off-road capable adventure bike, but on a big heavy adventure bike that's made for touring, you can't really do the off-road. So, I would prefer to see the off-road capable Dakar machine, but I'd like to know what you think. Are you only wanting to get your nice tasty coffee or are you really wanting to do some off-road riding? Let me know down below. The next story is quite a big one to unpack and that's Harley Davidson and their Pan America. This is quite a divisive bike as is the brand itself. So Harley Davidson have announced that they're delaying the release of the Pan America until 2021, which I know will frustrate many of you and the rest of you are probably cheering right now going, yes, I was looking forward to this, not because it's something that I would buy, but purely because it would just be a great disruption in the marketplace. Harley definitely have a interesting perspective on motorcycles. It just would have been nice to see some fresh ideas and a fresh take on the adventure bike come into the market but I'm gonna have to wait another year for that now there is a bigger discussion to have with Harley Davidson so as you know Harley Davidson have been experiencing financial trouble and they've just changed CEOs as well and he's kind of dropped all of what Harley were heading towards with their strange electronic bicycles and all their other peripherals that they were focusing on at the moment. And he's wanting to focus back down on Harley Davidson's roots. Now, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, but I do feel like Harley has been quite lost lately and they've really been caught with that mentality that they never need to change and that people are always going to come and buy their outdated motorcycles. Now I feel like I can talk about this because I have owned a Harley. I do like cruisers and I'm also a millennial and we tend to get blamed with killing the motorcycle brand. I think the first big misstep was just failing to change with the times. They just stuck with their old school motorcycle and never really adapted. Now I think keeping the aesthetic of an old school motorcycle is fine and that's proved to be hugely popular. That's not the problem. The problem is Harley misunderstanding the younger generations. I'm talking millennials and Generation Z. They came out with a street series, a very cheap looking and a very cheap motorcycle. It doesn't look like a Harley and the quality just wasn't there. And that's the difference. Millennials and Gen Zs, they don't necessarily want the cheapest motorcycle. They want the most value for money. And when you look at a Sportster, which costs the same amount as a middleweight uh, adventure bike, the value really isn't there. You get the quality components, you get the electronics, all the comfort uh, that you could want out of those bikes. And the Harley really offers nothing. On the Sportsters, it's really bare bones. If you want any kind of comfort, you gotta pony up into the $20,000, $30,000 region for the soft tails. And at that price, it really doesn't make sense because then you're comparing it to things like Triumph, the Caddy, BMW, those are all motorcycles that are far superior, in my opinion, to what the Harley offers, at least value for money wise and quality wise. I don't mean to be harsh to Harley, but that's just the truth. They really need to update their motorcycles to the 21st century. I'm not saying kill that awesome look. I love the look of Harleys, but they just need to add all those wonderful technologies we have, traction control, all the comforts, the rider settings, the electronic suspension, all those things that you can get on a middleweight adventure bike for $20,000 that you don't see on a Harley until you're going over 30 grand. So I think that's where they've made a big mistake. Yes, they should refocus on their roots, but they should also focus on bringing their brand into the 21st century. So now we move into the viewer question section of the video. 
So Marcel's got the first question of the day and he's asking why the SWM Super Jewel just hasn't increased in popularity and it's kind of gone quiet over the past couple of years. Now I've got a few ideas as to why this is. I haven't ridden the Super Jewel, but I have ridden the SWM RS650R, which uses the same motor. And as a product, it's actually quite a good dual sport. And I would expect the Super Jewel to fit in that category as well. So there are a few reasons I think that the Super Jewel and the RS650R and the RS series haven't really done as well as people were expecting, considering how they meet a lot of the requirements of a great dual sport and adventure bike. We've got ease of getting parts as one, the dealership network as another, there just aren't that many dealerships. Confidence in the brand is a big one. You've got quite an obscure name. You're asking people to remember a brand that was really big in the 70s. And not only that, is it's now an Italian brand that's owned by Chinese investment. So that makes the waters even more murky and couple that with an engine that is quite good and did have cult status, but was on a smaller motorcycle to start with in Husqvarna, a relatively unknown motor going into a relatively unknown motorcycle manufacturer. It's just compounded the issue of impacting people's confidence, but they really didn't put effort into trying to convince people that they're here, that they've got the R&D to back these motorcycles and that parts and warranties, they could really stand by it. The last one is longevity of the motorcycle. Yes, we know that the TE610 and the TE630 were fairly reliable motorcycles and the engine is pretty decent, but there just aren't enough owners that have really built up a reputation of solid reliability yet. And we're a superstitious bunch, us dual sporters, so we like our reliability. And if there isn't a massive breadth of uh, information saying that it's reliable and a really good name and reputation in the business, we can be quite a skeptical bunch. So I think all those things have worked against SWM. I'm not saying they're not a very good and pretty well priced uh, offering, kind of meeting that middle mark between an enduro and a dual sport. I just don't think they've done enough in marketing and targeting the audience that they're going after and trying to convince us that these are one, reliable, two, great value for money, and three, that SWM are here for the long haul. So the next question is from John and he's wanting to know which I would choose between a Tenere 700 and a Tiger 900 GT Pro. As I've recently ridden both of these bikes. Now it depends on the scenario mate and I can only speak of myself and my needs. I would go the T700 if it was the only bike in my garage and I really was wanting to do some off-road riding. It also leaves me some spare cash to get a second bike as well which is also always a fantastic option because more is better in my opinion and I always like having more than one bike in my garage. So the T700 definitely has the value for money and definitely has the off-road chops compared to at least the GT series. Now, if you're comparing it to the Rally series, then it's a different question as the Rally is much better off-road. But then again, I'd still go the T700. It's still lighter. It looks a little more durable and it has a lot less expensive things to go wrong on it when compared to the Rally Pro. Now, if I had the financial capital to go for the uh, GT, I would, as it makes the most sense for my personal needs. I would much rather have a lightweight dual sport for the hard off-road riding and get the GT Pro for the long distance touring and the two-up riding sticking my partner on the back. And in fact, this is the setup I've had in the past. I had the WR250R and I had the F700GS for taking me and my wife on the long trips. And that's my perfect scenario really, is those two bikes. So an ideal world, a small dual sport and the GT Pro, but given how expensive that is, I'm not spending 24 odd thousand dollars on a middleweight adventure bike. It's not happening. So I go the 700 all day long, really. So that's my opinion, mate. The next comment comes from Trini Daddy, and it's a bit of a long one. So I'm going to paraphrase here, mate. I apologize if I don't answer absolutely every aspect of your question, but you're asking me generally about the T7 and you're suggesting that you would like the T7 to have a few more items. That is a fancier TFT screen, some better electronics like cornering ABS and such, and some more 
more power. Now, you've also said that you're relatively new to off-road riding and you're a bigger bloke at about six foot two. So here's my thoughts on a bike for you as it seems like that's what you're asking, whether the T700 will fit the bill. Now, the things that you've given there to ask about the T7, the better tech, the nicer screen, the more power, I would suggest looking at another middleweight like a GS or the Triumph Tiger. They both have all of those things, 90 horsepower, TFT screens, and all the electronics to pilot the next space mission to the bloody moon. If that's what you're really after, then I would go another middleweight. Now, if saving money is what you need, but you still want fancy electronics and you also want off-road chops, perhaps consider a second-hand Africa Twin. It's a little bit heavier than the T700, but they're very similar in how they feel, their engine characteristics and what they offer. They're kind of that ethos of being a fairly dirt capable adventure bike. So consider that as well. But here's my final thought above all that. Considering that you've said you're new to off-road riding and considering you are saying that you don't care too much about on-road performance, I would encourage you to go with a dual sport. Go with a DR650 or a KTM 690 or maybe even a DRZ400 or a WR250R. These are bikes that are really gonna help you learn off-road. It's not gonna matter if you drop them repeatedly, they're indestructible, they're lightweight, so you're really not gonna kill yourself when you're dropping it five or six times a day in really hot or hard conditions. You're gonna thank yourself that you don't have a 200 kilo motorcycle. So I really think dual sports are much better for learning your chops off-road. And they're still more than capable on-road. A DR650, even at 6'2", mate, that'll have no problems hauling you along. And a KTM 690, that's got enough power to satisfy even the most uh, hungry of people for performance. So that's my thoughts, mate. Go with a dual sport if you're new to off-road riding. Worry about the adventure bike when you're looking at doing long distance touring and you really know what you want out of a bike. So the final comment is from Greg and it's got a great sentiment. And he's talking about himself and how we all tend to get caught up in talking about that magical unicorn motorcycle, that perfect bike that the manufacturer just quite hasn't made yet. And he's saying that we should all take that into account, but get out there and ride and enjoy the trails. And I totally agree with you, mate. Get the bike that is available now, and it's much more fun to take a WR250R, a KTM 690, a DR650, or even an EXC, and just modify it to try and make it your own perfect bike. It's just such satisfaction in creating your own perfect unicorn and getting out there and experiencing true adventure. So I'm just gonna leave you on that note, guys. Don't get stuck behind the computer too much dreaming of the perfect motorcycle. Get your ass on a motorcycle seat and get out there and ride. And as always, guys, I've been Chronicles of Solid and I'll see you in the next video. Catch you later.